pizza. Oh, hey there. If you played with readable writable stream or text encoder decoder, you might have encountered typed array. They are odd looking array that can only hold numbers for some reason. A typed array is an array that can only hold a specific amount of bit per item. By the way, a bit is like a binary, zero or one, while a byte is typically eight bits. Eight bits can represent a positive integer up to 255, while 16 bits can represent a positive integer up to 510. Well, no, it's 16,536, or two to the power of 16. From sine eight bits integer, that is minus 128 to 127, to unsigned 8 bits integers, which is from 0 to 255. They are also 64 bits positive integer, that is up to 18 quintillion? The typed array that can hold 8 bit positive integer is called a uint8 array. 8 bit happens to be the perfect amount of memory to hold any English character. This character encoding standard is called ASCII. It's one of the earliest and most famous character table that is still in use today. The table encodes every character that you might find on an American keyboard, plus some special character like null. In the late 80s, early 90s, the International Organization for Stand Standard ISO came up with a new encoding table to standardize all of the international character set, from East European to Greek to Arabic to Japanese. This table is known as UTF-8. Today, it encodes 154 languages and all of the emojis. The UTF-8 encoding is also used on 97% of all the websites. So back to the UNT-8 array. The web API specifies a pair, text encoder and text encoder. They are used to convert strings to UN8 array of UTF-8 encoded text and vice versa. So for example, if I type text encoder encode capital letter A, we'll get a UN8 array of one byte of the code 65. So 65 is a code that represents the capital letter A. If you try to encode letters from other character sets, for example, the Greek letter lambda, you'd get a uint8 array of 2 byte, while the Chinese character for love would return a uint8 array of 3 bytes. Speaking of love, if you are subscribed to this channel, I love you. Let's take a moment to play with a text encoder to make some sense of it. As I've mentioned earlier, the capital letter A is represented by the number 65. Logically, B is 66 and C is 67. Now, not so intuitively, lowercase a is 97, not 91. 91 is a left square bracket. Finally, 0 isn't 0, but 48. 0 is null. The first 31st character are meta character. They won't show up on the screen. 27 is escape, 10 is a line feed, and 7 will make your terminal ding. The text encoder constructor can be passed as a string to define the encoder to use the default being UTF-8. If the character can be decoded, it will return what's called a replacement character. You can force the decoder to throw in this kind of situation. The typed arrays share many of the same methods as the array. One of the major difference with an array is that a typed array can't be extended after being initialized. So for example, if we create a new typed array, Hans xs equal to new uint8 array and say that its length will be 12. Well, from then on, xs has to be 12, where I'll set 12 position from the zeroth index. And now we'll get hello world. We can use set to also change an arbitrary number of character at any position. Now we get hello denot. Well, that's not exactly what I was going for, so I could create a subarray of this array to truncate it. So I'll create a new typed array from xs calling the subarray function, 
and truncate it to 11 characters. Now I get hello Dino. Now I can use the map method to modify the typed array the same way I would with a normal array. So here I will transform every character in the array if the character is between uppercase A and uppercase Z, I'll add 32 position making it lowercase, otherwise I'll just return the character. So now I get hello Dino, all lowercase. Although this is often abstracted away, let's use fetch to find a UN8 array in the wild. So I'll do fetch and then my URL. This will generate a user object. So then I'll take the response and from the body, which is a readable stream, I'll ask to get a reader so I can read the data as bytes. This will return eventually a value. that I can log. First thing I want to do, because currently the value are presented as u and eight array, so I want to use the text decoder to decode the value. And then because I know that the decoded value is a JSON string, I could go and parse it. And now I, could, I can bring up my terminal and run dino run allow all just for testing purposes that's okay and the file that i want to run and we can see that we get our json object as expected perfect if you want to learn about the readable writable stream in more details let me know in the comments at any rate i intend to cover it on a more project-based series sometime soon so subscribe if you want to be notified when I will release this new series. If you are running Dino, we can experiment further with Dino Write to write the unparsed JSON to the terminal. Dino Write takes as the first argument a RID. A RID is a resource ID. In this case, the std out is the terminal output. So we just want to write to the terminal whatever value is. And we can just test it very quickly. And here we get the unparsed string. A better example of this would be to use Dino write file, where we can specify the file path and pass the value along. And once our file has been written to the file system, we can maybe just as an example, read it back. This will return a promise of a uint8 array. So here we'll get our typed array that we can maybe again console log decode first. And maybe parse as JSON. I'll run this code again just to show you. Now we have our object printed on the screen, and we also have our user object.json as expected. A typed array is a very memory efficient way to read and write raw binary data. When you receive data as a typed array and you have to decode it, there is a performance cost. In JavaScript, the string manipulation methods are hyper-optimized. But if you have a lot of data to decode and re-encode, it might be worth learning how to manipulate the data stream directly. I have planned to cover this in more detail in a future video. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, it's probably a good idea that you subscribe. You can also hit the like button, share, or write a comment to let me know that this video was useful to you. Okay, bye now.